All right. So thank you for joining today. And to get us started, I would like to thank Brandon DeWitt for the presentation that y'all just had the opportunity to watch. So at this point, I want to say send in any questions you may have. Um, you can send them into the audience chat box. Once you send those in, um, we'll make sure we answer those. And also, while you're here, don't forget to sign in and out of this presentation. So go to audience chat box, type your first name, last name, and the states that you're requesting credits for. So at this point, we're going to take the first question. And the first question I have here is, Brandon, it goes to you, and all you need to do when you get ready to answer is unmute yourself on the microphone. But what's a ballpark price of one of the sensors? And he's saying it looks like it would work on strawberries. And so if you want to kind of give him the, the price of it and what you think um, what you think it may work on strawberries, if you've had any experience with some other fruits and stuff like that. All right, Brandon said he cannot hear me right now. Um, can you turn your volume up? Do you have the volume muted perhaps? Hold on, give me a second. Hello. Uh, the volume muted on the computer, perhaps. Yep. It's all right. Even without the volume. I got it. I got it. Okay. We're good now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So now we got the question. We can hear you now. We're good. Sorry about that. All right, everybody. Let's go back to the question. So the question, Brandon, for you is um, what's the ballpark price of one of the um, one of the sensors? And this is from Chad. Uh, Holloman at Voitech.com. What's the ballpark price of one of the sensors that you discussed in your presentation? And what is it? He says it looks like it work on strawberries. He's not really asking a question about strawberries, but if you if you could speak to to um, anything on some fruits like that, uh, do that too. So I'll turn it over to you now. Okay, uh, a ballpark price usually runs. I think um, some systems that a water capacity systems run from fifteen hundred dollars for Fifteen hundred, two thousand for complete setup. Some of the systems with it offers a little bit more stuff, like a leaf wetness sensor, rain gauge, um, a few other things. Temperature, uh, EC conductor can run up around three thousand. You know, I mean, um, speaking of ones like the Metos is around three thousand. I think the Decagon is around fifteen hundred to two thousand. Anything to add on, on using them on crops like strawberries or any other maybe fruit crops? I know you talked about on peppers here specifically, and that's a little bit different, and, and I don't want to put you on the, fully on the spot with that, but I, I, I would agree with them. I think they work on most any crop that we're putting on raised beds like this. Well, exactly, and the biggest thing is, I mean, they'll work, I mean, especially something like plastic, they'll work on stuff that's not, I mean, we use them on bare dirt spinach, you know, and um, the biggest thing is you're able to keep up with your salt content, you know, for instance, let's say when you install a sensor, you find fill capacity. And let's just say at four inches, your fill capacity is 12 in, 12%. And so you know that's where you need to carry it to to reach fill capacity. Usually you have around a 3% variance there. So if you was to fall down, let's say to 9% at four inches, that's not detrimental. and you can use those watering events, you know, when you figure how long it takes, I know this is kind of going in depth, but with like a dye test to see how long it's taking that water to get from the tape to the root zone, that, you know, will let you know how long you need to run that system. And that will give you the amount of time that you need for run time so you can keep up with your salt levels, I guess, and, that way you can watch those salt levels for the berries, you know, keeping those salt levels high in the four to eight inch range. You don't want them down there in the 12 inch range where there's no feeder roots, you know, it's mainly a, a you know, tap root down there. You want to keep them up there in that four to eight inch range. So, I mean, you can use them for anything. I mean, they're very beneficial for, for any crop. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. I think that's a really good answer to that. Um, we still got a few guys that logged on. I see. Does anybody, um, Anybody have any other questions for Brandon right now? Either through the chat box or through um, through your question box on there. We'll give it a, just a couple of minutes to see if we get any more, Brandon. And if not, uh, that's when we'll kind of close the session out.
Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, these things, they're, you know, the main, they're data to record just to help you do a better job irrigating. That's that's what they're there for, you know. If we don't have too many more questions now, I do want to reiterate, um, I, want to, I want to thank Brandon again for the presentation. Um, I think he did an excellent job with that, provided y'all with a lot of good information. And don't forget that this will continue to be available all the way until April 30th. So, you know, you can go on and watch this presentation at any time. And um, if you have any questions, just reach out. You know, there's a way to reach out. I know we won't be able to do a live Q&A at that point, but, you know, you can reach out to one of us. Hey, so we did get another question that just came in, um, Brandon, at the bottom. So I'll, um, I'll go ahead and uh read it to you so this is from um alan thornton at north carolina state university he said are you right. planning to add sensors to farms or are you still comfortable with one sensor per farm that's a that's a good question i think go deep into that one yes um so i started off with one sensor just to understand it and once i got i felt like a grip on it and was understood where field capacity was understood you know how to better myself with my irrigation we've got a We've got around four sensors now, and with the four sensors, they're mainly all on vegetables. And what I do, I put them all when we start laying plastic and we get the crop planted, and it's time to put the sensor out. I mean, of course, I would love to put the sensor out a little earlier than I do, like I had spoken in the presentation. Um, I want to wait till there's less field activity out there. So I don't want to install a sensor and they put the stakes down that we use to hold the crop up when we string it. And, you know, the sensor is like right by a stick. It's not going to get an accurate reading that way. So what I normally do is put it in, you know, after at least the sticks are in the field for the pepper and cukes, I put them in when I think the cukes have got a decent amount of roots there so they can, they're utilized. You know I mean? I can get some decent, information there um but i would have a i've got four sensors now uh pretty much on every produce farm and what i try to do let's say if i have four farms that have pepper and cukes on them and if i have one in a field then i kind of get my information off that one and i can also use that information in the other field that's directly across from it because it's the same soil type and if i can kind of ballpark it you know that's what i do but um, we've got around four sensors now. And, you know, for vegetables, I mean, we're trying to get as many as we can. You know, I mean, yes, they are costly, but um, we're trying to add to it, you know, each year, each season. Like I said, I think that's a great point of discussion is, um, you know, one, one sensor provides you so much, but as, as Brandon kind of alluded to, you get so much information out of them as you, you start to get used to them and use them and learn with them get more and more out of them as you start to spread them out around the farm. So, um, and I'd like to touch to one, that question. I'm sorry, Brandon. I'd like, to, I'd like to touch on one thing on that. If, you know, people have probably asked for, I wonder how he is irrigating that field that he said is 75% of that soil type, that wet corner, how is he managing that? I have actually put a sensor in that wet corner. I've actually put sensors on top of the hill and put sensors on the bottom of the hill and had to go halfway down to the field and put tape cutoffs in the bottom half of the field because if you have a field that has a rolling structure to it, at the end of the day, when you are through irrigating, all that water is going to the bottom of that hill. So you're getting extra water down there. So I'll actually put tape cutoffs in those rows going across the, those ends so I don't drown those ends out. And by having that sensor in the bottom down there is telling me, Okay, on top of the hill, we're at field capacity, same soil type. But at the bottom of the hill, you're you know, you're you're giving me five percent, let's just say water capacity extra that I don't need. So that lets me know I need to start put, cutting those tape cutoffs down there, and only opening up those tape cutoffs when that sensor is telling me, okay, we're below field capacity. Go ahead, and give me some water, or am I just opening them up when I fertilize? And that way, that saved a tremendous amount of headache from having, having drowned out ends in fields that have slopes to them because the water is going to go to the bottom. I mean, you know, and it's going to rest down there and that's when it's, you're going to drown those ends out. 
perfect perfect um do we have any other questions i don't want to close this out too early i'm glad we're getting a couple coming in i think some good discussion here still a few of us that are signed in i see on the participant list if anyone else has anything else i'll give you another minute or two to get that in before we we shut it down and while you're while you're doing that i'll finish up this uh this reminder for you so not only um not only will the presentations be available until april the 30th but also the virtual trade show is going to be available till then so keep that in mind that the the trade show will be there and available till that time um you can watch it anytime um also don't forget i'll remind you one more time to sign out for your pesticide credits um i see some of you signed in make sure you sign out and it saves all that in that audience chat box so you you have everything there and um like I said, if you go back and rewatch or have any other questions for any any of the speakers, make sure you reach out. So, All right, we'll put out one last call before we go off air for any questions. And I'll touch on, you know, I mean, these things for people that want to use them. I know we're not discussing row crops here, but in row crops, I mean, they're very beneficial there. I mean, any any crop that you're fertilizing on a regular basis or spoon feeding fertilize, what I call like vegetables you do, I mean, that's where the critical at. I mean, because you know, you're just trying to save that uh save that fertilizer. And not overwater or underwater. All right. Exactly. Thanks for that extra. Like I said, it's it's, it's very involved. You can learn a lot, a lot from utilizing these sensors. So I mean, if we've got no more questions. I think uh I think we're good for today. I appreciate it. Again, thanks to Brandon. Thanks for those excellent answers he provided you guys. And um said don't 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 be afraid to reach out. I know sometimes with virtual meetings it's a little bit harder, but don't be afraid to.